but let's talk about this report that you published about dividends. 2020 was not a good year as far as dividends uh, were concerned, with many companies coming under pressure to cut, uh, reduce from regulators and also just from uh, a cash flow perspective, but they had to make those difficult decisions. But you're saying now that there are lots of positive signs looking ahead to 2021. Where are those signs coming from? Yeah, we've seen some really encouraging signs. And I think with the company management we speak at, there's a willingness now to resume payments, to improve payments and increase them. Some of the best areas that we're going to see growth are actually some of the areas that cut the most last year. So Australia, the UK, Europe had some severe cuts last year. And we're expecting quite a strong bounce back this year in dividend payments. Can I ask you how you're thinking about financials? We had a guest come on earlier on the show who's extremely bullish about the outlook for financials, not necessarily from a, a dividend standpoint, uh, but certainly there is less regulatory pressure this year on the banking system, and many of them have been given the green light to resume dividend payments over here in Europe, for example, resume uh, a buybacks. Uh, what, what does that do for the outlook into the second half of the year for, for financials, both in US and in Europe? I think it's really encouraging. Financials are an important player globally for dividends. And we saw in the first quarter some of those Scandinavian banks that didn't pay last year, weren't allowed to pay, making catch-up payments. And then we saw ING in the Netherlands also make a payment. I think it's fair to say with the regulatory environment, we've still got to wait and see what the what Europe, European regulator will allow banks to do later this year, and indeed in the same in the UK. But I think as some of that regulatory pressure lifts in Europe and the UK, we should see a resumption in some payments um, and at a decent level, albeit not as high as they were pre the pandemic. In the US, some of that regulatory pressure has already um, been released and the US banks didn't suffer like the European and UK ones did in the first place. They were allowed to continue to make payments. So it's really important for financials, but I do think the outlook is going to be quite good for them. And how does your uh, expected dividend return differ uh, geographically? Are you expecting there to be uh, more return and therefore more yield for investors if they look at U.S. stocks primarily, or is there more juice to be extracted from European companies? The U.S. Um, dividend payers have been very resilient throughout the pandemic and didn't see much cuts. Therefore, we won't see such a big bounce back. Um, whereas I said, UK and Australia, where we saw really significant cuts of over 40% in dividend payments um, at, at the market level, we do expect that growth. But the really good news is back in January, we thought growth this year would be about 2 to 3% globally in dividends. We've now upgraded that to 7 to 8%. So it's just reflecting that more positive outlook that we can now see, particularly given the vaccine rollout in some of the developed markets. Well, we haven't really talked about the UK, and I, I want to ask you about that because traditionally the UK has been the high income index market, uh, but then it's also heavily skewed towards um, what you would call the old industry. So miners, oil and gas companies, and uh, all of these companies, particularly in oil and gas, are undergoing massive business transformations at this point. Many have been forced to cut dividends. What is the outlook for UK dividends at this point? Yeah, the UK in the first quarter, dividends fell there about 27%. And that's because we saw BP and Shell cut last year, and that's still continuing um, to impact the numbers. Um, with, you know, they're basically rebasing their dividends. Those, those dividends are not going to come back for those oil companies. So they've reduced them significantly, and we've got a new lower level from which they may grow a little bit. But within the UK, I think we could see growth of between 5 to 10% in dividends this year, with some of those, possibly those financial areas coming back. The banks will have to wait and see. But also the miners, which, as you say, is a large sector in the UK, with those commodity prices booming, we saw a special payment um, from BHP. The dividend from BHP was up 55% compared to a year ago in Q1. So I think that's going to provide a lot of support. And then we are starting to see some of the smaller companies resume their payments. We had a Viva um, resume their payment direct line. So a lot of companies that um, suspended last year or cut are now returning to pay.